I'm John Kutch, and I'm the director of the Thorium Energy Alliance, but this talk actually comes from my consultancy, Whole World LLC Design Engineers, for the integration work that we're doing to integrate nuclear power, molten salt, thorium storage energy systems, and advanced high temperature steam electrolysis and other ways to make hydrogen. And so this applies to ammonia, but it could apply to steel production, cracking of petroleum products, and other sources where we want to replace carbon with hydrogen. A little nod to Buckminster Fuller. He was asked long ago, how do we get to the moon? And he put together a book called Nine Chains to the Moon, and a big part of it was what technologies have to be in place for us to get to the moon. It's just a good example of planning. Sometimes you forget some obvious things like life support or water or needing to go to the bathroom. And so this, hopefully you get some insights onto what we need to have a hydrogen economy. This is the bridge, what you're seeing here. This is a thermocline molten salt storage system. Simple as a hot tank and a little less hot tank. Some would call it the cold tank. It's filled with a very simple salt and maybe some things like uh, fire brick or metal balls. But what it does is it allows us to store thousands of megawatts of thermal energy very cheaply. We need a battery if we're going to balance energy from wind and solar and other intermittent unreliable energy sources. And when you build these molten salt storage systems, you're building tanks and insulation and valves and pumps, and you're learning how to put a lot of energy in, take a lot of energy out. And basically, this is a practice on how to build a molten salt reactor. You're dealing with all sorts of salts, redox control, and now all you need to make it a reactor is put some uranium in it, a moderator, and you are 99% the way to a nuclear reactor. So this is a great way to bridge where we are today, where we want to be tomorrow. Another part of the solution that is just now, just now come about is the real ramp up of new electrolyzers and high temperature steam electrolysis especially is especially uh, efficient when we have high temperature salt and low cost electricity and we can have both of those if we take curtailed renewables and we take high temperature salt from that is heated with curtailed renewables so now we have low cost electricity low cost thermal energy and with that we can do hydrogen cracking at a dollar or less per kilogram which is where you need to be if you're not under a dollar a kilogram you are not going to actually move the markets you will be considered a marketing exercise you won't be considered an industrial use right so the bean counters at your company are going to say all right we'll buy one electrolyzer and we'll make some 12 dollar a kilogram hydrogen just so we can take out an ad saying we're being green green steel green ammonia green whatever but really they're going to file that under a marketing expense because when they find out that they can get hydrogen for under a dollar in the Gulf Coast, Houston, Louisiana, they aren't going to be buying $12 hydrogen, right? So let's get real. If we want to make billions and millions of things, which we have to do, billions of tons, millions of liters, billions of kilograms of hydrogen, that's the only level at which the needle moves even a tiny little bit. And we need to grow up and realize that this is the sort of system, 100 megawatt electrolyzers, not a couple thousand kilowatt electrolyzers. As a matter of fact, the project that we're working on is 385 tons of hydrogen per day. 600 megawatt electrolyzers are needed to do that that run 24 hours a day. The last piece that is just coming online now are super advanced reverse osmosis systems because people always forget the water. If you're gonna replace 10 billion tons of transportation fuels or billions of tons of ammonia or millions of tons of steel and you're gonna do it with hydrogen, well, you better plan on figuring out where you're gonna get billions of tons of DI, 
level water, ultra clean water. Now, I've heard of some people who said, oh, I can use seawater directly, and that's a big claim, and so that needs big proof. And I'm going to say probably not, because seawater has all sorts of things in it that wreck a proton exchange membrane or a solid oxide system, and if you can do it, that's great. Fight for it, but in the meantime, we do have a real solution reverse osmosis water at scale, and a near-term innovation resin bed molecular sieves that might be able to clean up brackish water or just fairly dirty fresh water to a point where you could put it in one of these systems. So here we have the chains to the moon. The last chain, which we must work on, is a molten salt reactor. And the molten salt reactor is the embodiment of walk-away safe, efficient, factory-built, And when you have inherent safety, which is a classification, when you are inherently safe, which means there is no realistic way for your reactor to have uh, an out-of-bounds accident, then you can use smaller setbacks, smaller staff, smaller security, factory build them. And this is where we get to a cost of under $2 a watt uh, construction cost. That's under two cent a kilowatt energy, and that is the level you need plus 600 plus degree heat. That is the starting point that you need in order to make sub one dollar a kilogram hydrogen. Remember, that is the only thing that matters: sub one dollar a kilogram, or no one's going to take you seriously. Here is a reactor system showing the thermocline storage. There's also hybrid storage systems that we could explore using phase change arrays. But this is just a small example. This would be a university style system, somewhat like the Abilene Christian University system that they're building with Georgia and Texas A&M and University of Texas. They are going to build a first molten salt reactor system in the United States of America down in Texas. It'll be similar to the LF-1 that the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Synapse already have built in China. So we need to do this if we want to get to sub $1 hydrogen. I'm not a monster. I'm not going to read all this to you, but thorium molten salt reactors roll in uh, hydrogen production for ammonia, huge ammonia. Merchant scale ammonia, thousands of tons a day ammonia. That's where we need to get. Or thousands of tons of steel per day production. That is where we need to get. We need to get into the millions of tons. And that is in the West, right? In the United States, Canada, throw in Australia, Europe. We're a rounding error. We're 700, 800, call it a billion people. That means there's six and a half billion people who are in some level of energy poverty or another. And if we have energy poverty, they are going to go with the lowest cost energy. And unless we make the lowest cost energy nuclear, it's never going to be solar. It's never going to be wind, but it could be coal, which it is today. China is building 200 new coal plants today. We need to make nuclear more attractive than coal. That's all there is to it. So why am I so excited about this? Why, is, why do we know coal is going to be displaced by nuclear? Because we have the ability here to say that the power used and produced by nuclear is always available 24-7. So we get rid of this erratic up and down nature of fuel costs, of electricity costs, of intermittent electricity from renewables. Because nuclear is boring. Nuclear makes power at the same rate every minute of every hour, of every day, of every month, of every year. I show people this demand curve for uh, natural gas. And you see it goes up and down at a constant rate. But where's nuclear? Nuclear is those flat lines. That's how... We want our power, and if we can get our power to be flat, we have what's known as the elimination of beta. We eliminate beta risk, we can plan for years and decades in advance, and that is worth millions and billions of dollars. Just that is why nuclear, in addition to being hugely powerful, very compact, 
not polluting, ultra safe, nuclear, that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. We eliminate risk, financial risk and availability risk and planning risk. That right there is a huge reason to go with nuclear. So here's a cartoon example of how the uh, nuclear system for hydrogen would work. You can see the three main components there. Nuclear power. Now we've started a company called Wholesale Energy Acquisition Corporation, and that is to buy excess nuclear capacity in the Midwest. And we can combine that with curtailed power from windmills and solar I know the MISO grid planners and Amron and Exelon would be super excited to be able to get rid of the power that is currently unusable to them. And right now they have to throw that power away. We can get to a point where we can take it on board because our unique installation has the ability to have 22,000 megawatt hours electric energy storage pumped hydro electric energy storage. And that's megawatt hours 22,000 megawatt hours of storage we got to hear the word hours otherwise i think your capacity factors and your availability factors are just a made-up lie in addition to that we have 11,000 thermal megawatt hours of storage which would equate to about 6,000 megawatts of electric but you wouldn't use it for electric right you would use all that thermal energy combined with your millions of gallons of DI water and put it through an electrolyzer with some topping heat and you'd get to 650 degrees steam with a little bit of electricity and now you have all the hydrogen that you would ever need to put into a Haber-Bosch system with a plasma uh, assist and with modern economizers and recovery systems we can have Ammonia, that is, emissions-free, no CO, no NOx, no SOx, no volatile organic compounds. We would have the cleanest hydrogen-based product. We would have the safest ammonia, and it would be the cheapest. Cleanest, safest, cheapest. Isn't that what you want? And we have an opportunity to use over a million tons of pure oxygen. So if you've got an idea of what to do with that, I'm all ears because nobody from Tyson Krupp to Nell, nobody knows what to do with the oxygen. I think the dilution to pollution is the solution. So maybe we just vent it into the atmosphere and one day we get a, we get a credit for putting a million tons of oxygen back into the atmosphere to counteract some of the carbon dioxide and methane. On this slide, you see pure green ammonia, just pure green ammonia. The future is now... Our friends in the audience from INL have shown for years how nuclear hybrid systems work. And who else? Us right here. The Ammonia Energy Association has repeatedly shown that electrochemical nuclear power is the best way to make ammonia. Look, there it is. Lower left-hand corner, electrochemical nuclear. And they mean light water reactor nuclear. What happens if we put Molten salt reactors in there, that goes down even more. It was the cleanest, safest, best, cheapest way to make power, to make hydrogen, to transfer to the hydrogen economy. If you're not going to do it here, us minority, us 10% of the world here in the West, you know who is doing it? The Chinese Academy of Sciences, the SINAP, the CNSC. They are making the molten salt reactors. This is planning documents from 10 years ago. Here we see on this slide, China is committed to doing this. China is committed to doing high temperature molten salt reactors right now. That picture in the left hand corner is from 18 months ago, back in 2019. They have a completed system now in final phase. They are about to test it. They had COVID set them back a little bit, but you can see in their planning document from years ago in the lower right hand corner, there's nuclear, there's concentrated solar, there's solar and wind, and it all comes together in storage systems, which produce hydrogen production, which comes from all the energy storage and goes to hydrogen utilization, which is a euphemism for maybe, maybe they take coal and crack it into diesel. Maybe they take hydrogen and 
Haber Bosch it up at pneumonia. Maybe they take it and they make steel or they operate petrochemicals to uh, carbon neutral petrochemicals. There's so much that China is going to get done now. We need to do it. And groups like the Christian Abilene University folks are making America proud by trying to get this done, get an equivalent system done. But we don't have plans for a whole supply chain. We don't have plans for a whole cadre of operators where China does. So we have a chance to catch up, but not a very good one. But we need to do it. So why cross this bridge? Why would we do it? As a, Again, if you have even thermal molten salt storage as a start, even that bridge component is enough to make the best ammonia in the world. It would make the cleanest ammonia in the world. It would make the safest ammonia in the world. And it would also be the cheapest ammonia in the world. And if it isn't the cheapest, no one's going to buy it. Maybe they'll buy a little bit of your ammonia so they can take out an ad in the magazine and say, oh, look, we're supporting a green future. But other than that, it's a lie. That's marketing. That's not engineering. That's not at scale. Hydrogen at scale is the only way we can do it. And the bridge to that future is thermal molten salt energy storage. Thermal molten salt energy storage that leads to molten salt reactors. Molten salt reactors powered by thorium, MOX fuel, waste burners, breeders. That is what we need. Thorium energy in a molten salt reactor will give us a thousand years of prosperity. If we have a thousand years of prosperity, we can have Tomorrowland and we don't have to settle for idiocracy. We can have a future that's better, not worse. We can have a future of prosperity and abundance. We really can. And with that, I want to thank you for all your time. This is John Kutch. I represent Whole World LLC Design Engineers, and I am the Executive Director of Thorium Energy Alliance. I know that Thorium is going to power the future. Join me at thoriumenergyalliance.com, and we all together can save this earth. All seven and a half billion of us can have prosperity and abundance. Thank you for your time.